fabulous scrappy friends and thank you for joining me on day one of our Christmas advent calendar. So I'm going to take you through the process of how I made this card that Katie opened today for day one. So I started off by getting a 12 by 12 piece of cardstock and I cut it six inches by eight inches and then along the eight inch side I did a score mark at four inches. So that just makes your standard four by six size card. Then I took a piece of six by six paper and just trimmed it down just a smidge, just, um, oh, like, I don't know, an eighth of an inch, um, just so that it would, no, it was a quarter of an inch, just so that it would leave a little beautiful little border all the way around the edge. And that's going to sit on there. Now with the leftover bit of cardstock, so it's approximately what, four inches of cardstock that's left over once you cut that eight, so six by eight inches, you've still got to get to 12. So there's four more inches left. I cut uh, a circle, a scalloped circle, and then there was a, a last little piece that was a rectangle. So it's approximately two inches wide, maybe three. Um, and now I'm going around it with my border punch. This time I did circles. In the example one, I actually did um, little love hearts whatever, whatever tickles your fancy, whatever kind of border punch you have. And now I'm going to make the shaker part of my card. So as you can see, I made a scalloped circle using a die. And then I also have a die Christmas tree that I have cut out of the center of the circle. And that's going to be my shaker icon thing. <laughs> um, so I'm putting double-sided tape all the way around the outside of my Christmas tree and then I'm just going to get some packaging just some plastic acetate type packaging just nothing special it's literally an old plastic like bag that some shopping came in from scrapbook.com to be honest like it is nothing and I'm just going to push 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 rub that with my finger just really make sure that's sealed and as smooth as I can get it because I don't really want the creases and wrinkles in it I want it to look as nice as possible then I'm going to trim the excess that hasn't been stuck down and any bits that are like sticking over the edge of the scallop because I certainly don't want that showing through on the positive side and then I'm going to just layer up all of that double-sided tape again now this time I really do need to make sure there are no gaps and it's going all the way around the Christmas tree because this double-sided tape is going to hold my foam that's going to make um, kind of like the walls that are going to hold in the sequins. So I'm pulling up all my double-sided tape and then I have rolls and rolls and rolls of foam that I buy in about a two size from a craft shop that I just cut little spits and pieces off as needed. So I've just cut a little trim of it here. And all I'm doing, so there it is, there's my big gigantic roll that I'm just cutting a section off. And all I'm doing is I'm laying these lines of foam all the way around the outside of my Christmas tree, making sure you can't see it and that every single gap is filled because I don't want any little sequence to be able to slide out from between the walls, if that makes sense. The foam is creating a bit like a um, pocket to put the sequence down inside. And then that will allow them to shake because there's a little bit of room, a little bit of space, um, because obviously the foam is thicker than just um, sealing it paper to paper. And I just find that they rattle around a little bit better. Now I'm popping double-sided tape again. Yes, it is the third time on top of all of this foam so that I can adhere it to my cardstock that's going to seal the back. So there are my sequins, popping those inside. You need more than you think because you want it to be relatively full so that um, you, they can still jiggle and move, but so you can actually see them and they don't just all drop to the very bottom when you stand your your picture up. So now I'm taking my little rectangle that I did the border punch on and it's going to mat the back of my sequins, of my shakers, shakers. You got two ways of doing this. You could put the sequins in a little pile on the rectangle and then place the Christmas tree on top so you can sort of see a bit more about where your Christmas tree is going. I tend to just take the gamble and take the risk and do it this way. Um, where you literally cannot see where your 
pinning and just hope for the best that it goes correctly. Um, so far, it seems to have worked for me in the past, but you may prefer the way of making a little pile of sequins on the back of the of the rectangle and then putting the Christmas tree on top. I did just eyeball this and now that I'm looking at it over the top, it is way off center. Um, but in real life, I didn't notice it so much. I'm usually pretty particular about having things centered and it wasn't that noticeable, yeah, in real life. Um, now I've just popped a little bit more foam underneath the Christmas tree because I'm going to put on my sentiment. This sentiment is just from a sticker sheet I got from a Kaiser Craft collection, just using up some, some leftover stock. And that's going to pop on there. And if I wanted to, I absolutely could have got some rhinestones or diamantes or something to decorate the actual trees themselves. That might have looked really cool. But I'm just going to leave them as they are. So here are my two finished cards that Katie will have opened today. So the red one I did first and I actually chopped my sequins into little bits, but the green one I left the sequins whole. I'm really happy with the way these came together. Thank you for watching day one and I hope you can join us again tomorrow for day two.